the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. I got a new toy for my deep dive videos. Let's get into it. <laughs> this video will be inspired by over the top action movies from the 90s. In a world where red pandas are moving in on everyone's Caspa hash rate with their KS2. Only one man can stand in his way. Greater Good Mining has been training his whole life for this moment, and we all know that when making a sequel, the body count needs to be higher. Strap in and get ready for a rough ride. All right, let's get serious. Hey, everybody, Greater Good Mining here. Okay, so in this KS1 deep dive sequel, I'm going to get more serious than in the first deep dive video, but I'm still going to put my signature goofy crap in for my own entertainment deal with it. Anyway, let's get into it. First, let's talk about how much I've mined in how many days, current Caspa price, how much my KS1 bag is worth at this moment of filming, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so Caspa today at this moment, while I'm filming this, it's worth 0 0.02524 cents per cast. And I've got about 68,200 Caspa in my tandem wallet and about 900 Caspa on the Caspa pool getting ready to hit my tandem wallet. So on the KS1 alone, I've mined over 69,000 Caspa. Yiggity. <laughs> I've mined about $1,750 worth of Caspa in less than four days. And uh, right now I'm getting around $438 per day with this Caspa ASIC mining beast. So that makes my personal remaining time to ROI about 32 days left. Um, now, I know that is only if nothing big changes, including the price of Caspa, the network hash rate. We all know things change fast in crypto. So anyway, let's look real quick at the Caspa uh, network hash rate while we're at it. So on Hero Miners, we're seeing 1.13 petahash. And people have told me I should include other sources and yada, yada, yada. Um, so I threw in mining pool stats, network hash rate. Um, and they said 1.21 petahash, but literally by the time you click from one to the other, it can change. So, I mean, that's pretty close, guys. Let's not get too nuts with these like little decimals, okay? We're talking about, I'll be worried when I see like stick sticking numbers, like numbers that are like higher and they stick. That's when you know more hash rate is at the network. This this number fluctuates wildly throughout the day. So I'm not going to worry too much about the difference between 1.13, 1.21, 1.5 petahash. I posted on Twitter the other day it hit 1.5 petahash. Uh, and then I swear like 30 minutes later I checked it was back down to 1.2. So I'm not going to get excited until it stays up there, guys. Let's talk about the fans and the noise. Um, so in the video I posted earlier today, I was talking about the fan speeds, how they suddenly sounded louder, even though the temps in my garage have been much cooler than the first day I posted the video. Um, I even put my air conditioner on uh, to see if maybe the fans might auto adjust on their own, just to see if I could get the temperature in the garage cooler and see if the fans just did whatever auto adjusted. Um, so I got my answer actually when Ice River reached out to me personally. Um, thank you for contacting me, Ice River. Um, they said, hi, Greater Good greater good Mining. We saw your video um, and they said you could check the fan speed settings. And I, I know you can change the fan speeds in there. Um, they said 50% fan speed is enough. Um, so they also go on to say that they think I set my fan speed to 100%, but I didn't. I didn't set my fan speeds to 100%. Um, I did reboot my miner the other day and maybe it ramped back up to 100% after I rebooted it and maybe it did it on its own. Um, but I did not set my fan speeds to 100. Um, it might have been just from rebooting it. So anyway, Ice River goes on to say that the fan speed at 100% will cause the power to go up, as you might have seen in my earlier video. I was pulling 100, 730 watts. So yeah, of course, when the fans are going at full blast, you're going to pull more wattage. Um, so they said... Like I said, setting the fan speed to 50% should be enough. Um, that's for the KS1. Um, I don't know about the KS2. I'm not sure if that's different for the KS2. All I'm talking about for now is what they told me about my KS1. Uh, they know I have a KS1. So, um, so they said, when you set this fan speed to 50%, the website will still show 100%. So I knew that. You guys might have seen my video in the KS1 setup video. I'll post the link in the description. Um, I had set my fans to 60%. Uh, but when I went back and looked in the web GUI, it kept saying it was 100%, but I knew they were not running that loud and that fast at 100%. Um, 
So I faffled around in that video and I showed in my video that there was a glitch on the web GUI. Um, and you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and show the clip. Um, I'm going to pause what I'm talking about and I'll show you the clip so you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's easier to watch the clip than me describe it to you. So here's the clip of me um, showing you how the fan says 100% on the web GUI, but it's only running at 60. Then when I punch in 100%, on the web GUI and save it again, it ramps up to 100%. So you'll see what I'm talking about in the video. Here we go. There's not that much you can change. Like you can change the fan settings. Um, I turn the fans down to like uh, 60%. Um, but for some reason, whenever you go back to this page, it defaults back to where it shows 100. But if you can hear them right now, they're quieter. They're running at 60%. Let me just show you, like I'll change, I'll just hit the save button and then you'll hear it ramp up. Yeah, it gets it gets pretty loud. Like I went back in and I saw it said fan speed settings 100%. I'm like, nope, that's not what they sound like. They don't sound like 100%. So I changed it to 100% in my video and you can see and you can hear it ramp up in that video back up to 100% truly. So um, at this moment on the web GUI, if you change your fan speeds around, it will always look like it's set to 100%, even if you set it to 10% or something, um, it will say 100%. Um, Ice River is aware of this problem. Um, they said they will solve this problem in a later update, so I'm assuming maybe they'll release some firmware down the road, guys. Um, that way we can actually see what our fans are set at, uh, and it won't say 100% on their web GUI. So anyway, cool. Thank you again, Ice River, for reaching out to me. Um, so I thought I could, I could include, include this in my updated video today. They knew I was going to post another video. So thank you, Ice River, um, for giving me that information. I don't want to lead anybody astray, so I'm doing my best to keep you guys informed. And Ice River seems to be uh, trying to help me out, getting you guys the proper information. Okay, as if I haven't beaten this dead horse enough, um, let's talk for about fans for one more second. Um, I also received the technical specs and infos directly from Ice River on these fans. Um, these are the fans on the KS-1. Thanks again, Ice River, for getting this information to me for this video. I really appreciate it. Um, so I'm just going to put the pictures up for you guys, and uh, you can do what you want with the information. Uh, screenshot it, put the pictures up on your wall, FAFO, and get some new fans, whatever you want. Um, I'm keeping my stock fans because I don't want to avoid my warranty. And now that I know Ice River recommends 50%, I'm happy with them. They are nice and quiet even at 60%. Um, I had them set at, you know, I think it was like 60% and they were fine. Um, as long as the thing doesn't reboot and uh, I think it, deep, it must default to 100% because um, I know I had to reboot my miner after my uh, pool issue the other day. Watch my other videos if you guys want to see what is going on with the pools. Um, I, uh, I rebooted it and I think it probably defaulted back to 100% somehow. So um, anyway, shout out to Foley Electric. I know he was looking for some info on this. So hopefully the pictures of the specs uh, for the fans help you out Foley Electric. All right, uh, what do we want to tackle next? Oh yeah, all right, back to the theme of 90s action movies. I got a uh, thermal imaging camera. So uh, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna go back into the garage where the KS-1 is and we're gonna test out some thermal imaging on this thing, see how hot it is. Love that movie Predator. All right, so my thermal imaging camera lines up pretty much perfectly with the what is reported in the web GUI. Um, damn, this little thermal camera is awesome. Uh, so, okay, uh, the thermal camera is showing the intake temperature at about 31 to uh, 32 degrees, and that's on the intake side. And then on the exhaust side, uh, the thermal imaging camera is showing about 43 degrees. It's almost dead on with the web GUI temp, guys. Here's a picture of the, you know, the web GUI um, while I was shooting this. And um, that's with the fan speeds at 100%. So in order to FAFO and test this against what Ice River recommends for fan speeds, I turned the fan down to 50%. That's what they told me would be um, adequate for the KS-1. And I retested some things, and here's what I got. 
Okay, even though I could play with that thermal imaging camera all day, uh, we got to move on. So as far as the noise goes, um, it came down from almost 90 decibels down to about 72 decibels. When you just say the numbers, it doesn't sound like much of a change, but the way, it's, the way sound works is weird. It's like, you know, crazy and sciencey. So uh, anyway, check out this chart that compares the difference of common things you'll come across in everyday life to the decibel range you can expect it to be in. Um, so 90 decibels is like the amount of noise a sander or like a welder running would make. Um, and then we got this thing down to about 72 decibels, which is about the amount of noise a toilet flushing or like a vacuum cleaner makes. Um, that's a big difference. Uh, I can tell a huge difference um, when I'm out, you know, shooting my videos and just listening to the thing. It's it's much quieter on 50 percent, which we expect. Um, also, check out how much uh, the wattage dropped on my watt meter. Um, here's a picture of the watt meter uh, before at uh, with the fans at 100 percent. And then here's a picture of the watt meter after with the fans at 50 percent so these are expected results that you'd you'd have a quieter and less power hungry machine um, but it's nice to hear it straight from ice river that it's okay to run these fans at 50 percent it makes me feel a little bit better um, i might run mine at like 60 percent because i don't i, I don't want to like have it heat up more than is necessary and i don't mind you know using a few extra watts to keep it cool um, and i'll just keep checking the temperatures and i'll keep you guys updated i got the thermal camera now i want an excuse to play with the thing okay so now that it's been a while i'm gonna head back out to the garage and see how the temperatures are with my thermal imaging camera and i'll check in the web gui and we'll see how the temperatures are after running the fan at 50 percent for a while i think it's it's been probably about an hour since i uh I drop the fan speed down so that should be pretty sufficient time to get some good results and get some, get some good data on how hot it is and hopefully it's working out okay we'll see <laughs> Okay, so once again, the thermal imaging camera is pretty accurate when you compare it to the web GUI. I mean, when you look at the two, you're kind of just splitting hairs really between highs and lows of the temperatures reported in the web GUI versus the thermal camera and average temperatures. So anyway, the web GUI is reporting intake temps anywhere from like 29 degrees to 33 degrees, which is actually a bit cooler than when I had the fans running at 100%, uh, which I did not expect. Um, and as expected, the exhaust temps are a bit higher with both the web GUI and my thermal imaging camera, um, both reporting around an average of like 47 to 48 degrees, uh, with the lowest reported temperature in the web GUI on the exhaust side at about 45 degrees and the highest reported temperature on the web GUI 52 degrees. So check that out versus my thermal camera. I mean, it's pretty close. Um, so I mean, those seem like acceptable temperatures, um, at 50%. Once again, I might run my fans a little a little faster just to um, make sure they stay cool, like cool. I I live in Florida. My garage gets hot. I just um, I don't want to like run this thing at 100 um, percent. But I also don't want to have it overheat uh, while I'm away or something like that if I'm at work. Um, so I'd rather just err on the side of caution, run it a little bit fast, faster than 50 percent. But now you guys got the data and you can make your own choice on what you want to do with your fans. Um, so. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you and at least a little bit entertaining. Uh, not as goofy as my other deep dive video. I'm going to try to like keep it, uh, keep it real and keep it um, more informative, but also have some fun with it still, guys. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and consider subscribing to my channel. It took a long time to make this video and I put some effort in. So I hope you guys really enjoyed it and it was helpful. Last but not least, don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good the greater good